Welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. My name is Dino Boris Dugu. I'm going by Boris, preferably. And um, I'm actually employed as a consulting systems engineer for Fortinet. And I'm tackling everything which has to do with enabling and securing OT and ICS installation bases for um, our customers, which are mainly going through and spanning EMEA. So that's it for my side. Um, I just wanted you, um, possibly if you want, to applaud uh, SCRT for the organization of Insomniac because I am very happy to be here. I hope that you are also very happy to be here. It's been a long time since I've actually talked in front of people, so I might have some kernel panic at some point, but uh, just try to say sunshine or something like that, and I might come back. Um, okay. Uh, that was that. N now that I spoke a little bit about SCRT, I just wanted to take a few um, outcome that you will find on the SCRT blog, which is a very nice read. And into the output that I've taken today, um, there's a few of them uh, specifically talking about um, what their audit department are usually seeing in the wild and actually the lack of things they are seeing in the wild. And here, um, it was actually a survey which has been conducted internally at SCRT amongst all the business units within SCRT and the outcome of that survey came out with uh, what will be the, the, the best uh, method to do in order to protect any given customer at any given point of time and the first outcome that came out was actually network isolation. So basically we see that network isolation is something that is really tremendously in need and not only network isolation by the means of enabling VLANs, enabling segmentation points, etc., but network segmentation enabling firewalling filtering in between these segmentation points. And that slide is to enforce that messaging again because the narrative isn't very new and you will find others uh, input into the same blogs concerning the same type of information and the fact that um, there is rarely any um, communication firewalling in between or within the given same subnet. <coughs> Now, let's dive into uh, what Fortinet can do um, for OT customers. So basically, the first thing we, we have at Fortinet is a OT speciality. So we try to, to really enable all the workforce we can and all the research and development we can onto uh, securing ICS and OT. Um, we try to comply as much as possible with our devices, with uh, the industry uh, standard regulation and compliance requirement. That's uh, a big job, so to speak. Um, we also uh, try to identify as much as possible as OT-based network communication on the wire, meaning that our devices might have the possibility to identify on the wire exactly which type of ICS communication is going on, and you will have the possibility to actually police this type of ICS. CSOT communication. <coughs> Another very important uh, topic here is the intrusion and detection uh, and prevention possibility of it by um, Forty OS. We have more than 250 threat researchers which are working around the clock in three different data centers in order to provide and update our devices with uh, threat intelligence um, concerning not only, but of course, ICS and OT. And we also provide one of the leading application control possibilities offering um, ICS uh, uh, communication control on the wire. Uh, network segmentation, I will talk about that during the speech, so I won't extend too much here, but we have the possibility to, of course, provide you with uh, the enablement of segmentation points and going further than that, uh, provide micro segmentation uh, through the enablement of 40 switches. The Fabric Ready partner is um, our ecosystem, which I'll have a, co a couple of slides talking about that. <coughs> OT solution architecture, so basically mainly what happened is that within any given uh, OT uh, premises, we usually find the IT department on top at which at some point within the network you will see the operational technology boundary and um, in here, here is how we will actually enable uh, and protecting communication within the OT um, authentication boundary. First, 
We will start with um, actually enabling zones and conduits. We will do that with 40 OS, for example, and uh, try to secure remote connectivity in the IT department. So two devices here enabled, uh, 40 OS, of course, and switching layer two devices with our 40 switch uh, possibilities. Deep OT visibility, uh, we will enable that with uh, our industrial services um, which are enabled on 40 OS. So that deep OT visibility will provide you with the possibility to control ICS and OT communication on the wire. And that will be enabled into the control network toward the field network down within the OT installment. Role based role-based access control, sorry, we will enable that with two different types of solutions. So as you can see here, we have a uh, 40 NAC in order to enable a uh, network access control, if that is something that is of interest for any given customers. We also have one very interesting platform, I'll talk a little bit about it, uh, 40 Authenticator, in order to enforce two-form factor authentication throughout the OT installment. Of course, we try to secure critical endpoint with uh, one solution which is called 40 EDR. So you have to, the possibility to enable a kernel based uh, EDR solution onto the endpoint which are comp comprised uh, within the OT installment. And finally, uh, not, not yet finally, sorry, we have the um, centralized uh, security management plus SOC NOC uh, operation controls here. So here we can enable solutions like 40CM, for example, um, of, of course, 40 manager in order to manage the fleet of device in the field and 40 analyzer in order to gather logs from your Fortinet uh, security fabric ecosystem. <coughs> Finally, yes, the possibility to install and deploy uh, advanced uh, threat protection systems with here two devices, uh, two appliances possibility, 40 Deceptor, which I'll talk about in detail a little bit throughout the presentation, and um, our 40 Sandbox solution, which will enable on-prem sandboxing if so wanted. <coughs> This slide is actually representing an IEC 62443 compliance solution architecture. Of course, you will see a lot of uh, Fortinet enabled uh, possibilities here. I think that um, uh, what that slide really summarizes and uh, the idea about this slide is that what at Fortinet we try to enable and uh, push toward our customer in order to protect their architecture is this uh, vertical part here in which we will put our 40 OS devices at the core of the network and uh, control the layer two devices, namely 40 switches, and hence provide segmentation possibilities directly within the 40 OS installment. Now, of course, at the level three, level 3.5, you see a lot of uh, possible uh, Fortinet ecosystem appliances. Um, at which, of course, it's at customer discretion in order to see if they want such type of solutions. It's not, of course, an obligation, but it's something that Fortinet can provide and can put and enable into a given ICS installation. Here, for example, CM solutions, boxing, management, analyzer, authenticator, and the 40 proxy, for example, which will enable a single outbound pass through our 40 proxy possibility. Fortinet solution offering for ICS and OT, we have a few rugged devices. So these are these devices which are especially made for harsh um, environment where we will have the possibility to deploy, for example, all the 40 OS uh, based devices you are seeing here uh, on that slide. Plus we have two different rugged switch and two different um, uh, access points in order to enable uh, such type of installment into harsh environment. Keep in mind that these uh, rugged platform are one thing, but mainly a lot of our OT customers are also uh, able to host completely standard type of appliances within their data centers. Meaning by that, that if you have a complete uh, normalized type of data center plus uh, air conditioning, etc., you can run and host any type of 40 net appliances. <coughs> I will now try to present to you uh, a global customer use case um, that is a worldwide um, uh, industry actor. Um, they actually deployed six 
100 plus 40 gate throughout uh, the year 2020 and 2021. Um, they had three different appliances of choice, so a small, medium, and large appliance. They had thousands of worldwide uh, locations in which they wanted to enable uh, cybersecurity through um, the leverage of Fortinet installment. They went for a fully converged IT and OT Fortigate deployment. I will detail exactly that deployment scheme in the upcoming slide. Uh, of course, obviously, they wanted to have centrally uh, managed uh, zero-touch uh, provisioning deployments possibility, meaning by that that the deployment wanted to be controlled by the HQ. Um, and they were roughly adding 2 plus 40 gate daily and still are adding 2 plus 40 gate uh, daily uh, on a daily basis today. Um, the project drivers, um, OT and IT convergence, so this was the top priority in order to converge these two worlds and have a security view onto these two worlds in the parts. <coughs> Security framework unification. They wanted to unify all their security uh, tools and artillery available in order to secure their environment. They did that with uh, Fortinet installment. Plus, they wanted, of course, a single point of central management. So that is the view um, of the, the actual architecture they chosen in order to deploy their FortiGate appliances. What you can see here is uh, comprised of a single or clustered FortiOS appliance. The idea here is to divide the uh, FortiOS uh, appliance, so to speak, into uh, different uh, functional domains. Um, by functional domain, we see here three different back-end, should I speak, um, functional domains. So we have the OT domain, of course, the IT domain, and the management domain. We have a fronting uh, to the VAN uh, domain, which is here called VAN domain, and that domain is the only one which will have VAN connectivity. So with VAN connectivity, we can extend that through MPLS network, for example, uh, mount IPsec tunneling toward the HQ or anything of that vein, even go to further SASE processing if so wanted by the customer. Now that uh, that VAN functionality has been explained, the interesting idea here is to see that within the OT domain, for example, we have the possibility to further deploy layer 2 device and control these layer device, uh, layer 2 device at the OT domain. Meaning by that, that anything that will be behind that OT domain has all the zone and conduits and policy enforcement plus all the Fort US available artillery available directly from the OT virtual domain. Meaning by that, that uh, all the communication that happens within the OT domain is protected by that particular domain. Anything that might need to reach the outbound world um, would have been subject to the policies which are further in the van VDOM, for example, or any other VDOM part of the configuration. <coughs> Sorry, that uh, kernel panic moment. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, further on to the IT domain, for example, uh, as we can see here, we, we also have the possibility to host on-prem um, appliances. Here in, in that illustration, we see uh, a 40 sandbox, for example, appliance which is hosted behind the IT domain. Keep in mind that that 40 sandbox appliance can be uh, actually uh, targeted by any uh, given device part of that subsystem. And uh, we can, of course, make submission to this sandboxing subsystem wherever the submission might come from the, that configuration. Another uh, last thing I wanted to mention here, I will talk about that a little bit further on within the presentation, the access VLAN uh, possibility you see on that uh, slide here and within the three different zones enabled into the OT domain. So that access VLAN possibility is the Fortinet uh, feature set which will enable you to uh, actually analyze a lateral movement that might occur within one given subnet. So I'll talk a little bit about it later on. 
So, of course, they wanted to have uh, central management for all these um, uh, 40 OS devices in the field. Um, the view you are seeing here is their view from uh, 40 Manager, which is actually hosted uh, on a cloud, a public cloud vendor uh, behind IPsec tunnels, of course. And uh, just the illustration here is to, to show you that uh, it's a real possibility to have plenty of device in the field um, reporting to the same 40 manager and orchestrate all these policies at the, uh, of course, 40 manager uh, layer. Now, in terms of policy orchestration and what these devices are actually eating up uh, whenever they show up on the network, uh, this is uh, one view of what has been decided by that customer in order to push all these policies to any given FortiGate that arise on the network. So they, they talk with their teams, they talk with their plant managers, and um, they came up with a quorum of uh, policy, which uh, is here uh, detailed by the global uh, OTV DEM policy, for example. Um, and that quorum of policy cover pretty much roughly 90% of their policy needs in order to secure any given plants of their environment. Of course, there will be uh, some cases where uh, one very special uh, machinery into a given plant might talk uh, a different uh, uh, ICS and OT uh, language, messaging protocols that will need pinpointing at that particular plant. But nevertheless, the idea here was to unify as much as possible all the communication and have the same subsets of policies uh, pushed toward any given device that uh, is currently under management. Uh, concerning the, the zero touch uh, deployment, the idea was to actually fill in some site configuration from the, the plant manager. Uh, we have to take into account here that obviously within ICS, when we say plant manager, that um, individual um, his mission is to run his plant 24 by 7. Meaning by that, that any disruption of the plant is actually money that is not coming in uh, for that particular plant manager. And you know how it, how this goes. They, they, they really are pretty much, so to speak, sometimes a little bit reluctant to see changes coming in and to see new uh, things being changed uh, within their networks. Nevertheless, the idea was to fill in the site-specific configuration, gather this information, and um, once we have uh, that filled in, uh, connect the 40 get uh, to the 40 manager staging VLAN. Once we are there, the local IT uh, staff will actually stage the 40 gate by booting the device uh, with a generic USB key, which will connect to the 40 manager IP address and under complete HQ control. Once we have that, um, the ZTP tool will actually provision uh, the 40 gate toward the 40 manager and we will retrieve all the given uh, configuration for that specific 40 gate device. So pretty much not much to do for the local IT staff. They could stage the, these 40 gates themselves quite easily. Once that has been done, actually it was just the operation of pretty much switching the cables toward the production environment and booting up uh, the FortiGate into its final uh, configuration and final cabling mode. I'll now present and detail a few of the um, OT uh, customer praised features, so to speak, about what um, is actually of interest for ICS and OT individuals within the field, what they actually like about uh, what we can uh, propose to them. Um, I talked about it, uh, obviously, of course, the enablement of layer two device from the core uh, of your cybersecurity solution. Here, 40 switches uh, enabled and controlled, managed by the 40 US installment. So that is something that is quite praised within ICS and OT because it means that they will have the possibility to enable any single segmentation points directly from within the uh, 40 US uh, installment itself. So 
Of course, you have all the port level and visibility within uh, 40OS. You have multi-tenancy available. So if you want to ship a VLAN toward a different uh, functional uh, domain, we call them internally virtual domain. So if you want to ship a VLAN over a different virtual domain and control the segmentation point from different functional domains, you have these type of, po of possibilities. We support plenty of tiered architecture available with 40 switches. So here I just listed one which is called multi-tier uh, switching topologies through uh, 40 gate uh, high av availability. Um, plenty of these uh, possible deployment schemes are available to you and you will have the possibility to control all your layer 2 devices in names of 40 switch. Of course, it helps to implement best practices, namely IEC 62443, NIST, defense in depth, etc., because we enable segmentation from the core of the uh, chosen cybersecurity solution. Um, again, segmentation and micro-segmentation. Um, that micro-segmentation feature is actually this one. We call it Access VLAN. Um, what is implied here is that onto a given and configured VLAN, you will have the possibility to toggle um, a toggle option within uh, 40 OS in order to enable intra-VLAN traffic, which will climb up back to the 40 gate. <laughs> so pretty much that, that means that every single lateral movement that might arise within that given subnet will be uh, uh, supposedly uh, under scrutiny of the 40 OS installment. What we do here, generally speaking, into ICS and OT is that we enable a passive probing onto these given subnets. So we will uh, analyze all the traffic. Uh, traffic will pass through uh, AV, IPS, application control, and we will actually gather all the information without disrupting traffic. So at least we have a complete knowledge and complete visibility of what is going on and what is laterally moving within one given subnet. So our customer like that feature and uh, pretty much implement it uh, in the wild. Another interesting feature, which is embedded within 40 OS, so you don't have to pay for that. It's something that comes embedded within. Um, it's a small NAC solution. It has nothing to compare with fully dedicated, uh, huge NAC solution, the one we, we know of. We also have one, our 40 NAC solution. Nevertheless, the idea here is to propose a small NAC possibility um, of any given uh, 40 OS that has this 40 switch layer 2 device under management. By that, uh, the use case I've seen a lot within um, uh, ICS and OT um, was for the uh, ICS uh, operators to actually NAC their unused uh, switch ports, meaning by that, that they will have deployment with, for example, a 48 uh, uh, port uh, switch device in which they use uh, up to 80%, the 20% percent which remains, they will actually knock uh, these ports in order to either uh, uh, move and seat anybody that might uh, connect to these ports into a dedicated VLAN or request a user authentication uh, if that's wanted. Um, 40 guard industrial security services. This is now a license that uh, you'll have to enable onto your 40 OS device if you want to uh, control uh, any ICS and OT communication on the wire. So, uh, here, what we will do is that we will enable you with all the intelligence we know about uh, ICS and OT onto your 40 OS system, and you'll have the possibility to leverage two different uh, uh, UTMs and modules, so to speak. So, application control, in which you will have the possibility to control exactly on the wire what's going on at the signature level. I'll come to that uh, in a few slides. And virtual shielding, which will provide you with the ability to virtually patch uh, known vulnerable devices within the uh, ICS deployment. Um, one very interesting uh, uh, thing on to uh, 40 OS is that you have the discretion to configure these security profiles up to your will, meaning that, but that uh, you can have plenty of these security profiles and you can mix and match 
at the policy level what security profile you want on that particular policy. So if you want to craft, for example, read, uh, write uh, operation from one end of the network toward a different end of the network, you have the possibility to do so. If you want to only allow read uh, uh, access uh, onto any given ICS protocol, uh, you might also have the possibility to do so. Quite handy and uh, a very versatile possibility from FortiOS. So now on to these uh, industrial uh, security services provided by FortiGuard onto uh, our FortiOS uh, subsystems. We provide currently uh, uh, 1830 application control selectors. So these are the type of selectors here into uh, my example. I've chosen to show you the three connects three station uh, uh, protocol that we can control at the uh, uh, firewall level. And the idea here is that every Every single line you can see here is something that you can put in your application control security profile. And, and that is quite impressive because you will have the possibility to really mix and match with any messaging from the ICS protocol that you will want crossing your segmentation points. Uh, so quite handy, and as I said, uh, a lot of granularity offered by uh, our FortiGuard uh, labs individuals. Um, same applies to, uh, and comes with that particular license bundle, um, same applies to uh, the uh, IPS side of the uh, uh, ICS and OT offering. Uh, so we have, of course, uh, virtual patching signatures that will patch known vulnerable device. Up to today, we have uh, 540 OT uh, and ICS dedicated IPS selector, virtual shielding, uh, known vulnerable assets. And this is counting. We work on, on uh, providing new uh, IPS uh, signatures on a daily basis. So if we are being aware of anything that uh, 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 might be a known uh, vulnerability or even sometimes we, we are pinged from uh, manufacturers in order to protect their known vulnerability that they dissolve uh, within closed uh, ground, so to speak, uh, within FortiGuard and, and different uh, uh, threat intelligence services, uh, we will, of course, uh, provide that to our customer base. Now, another interesting topic uh, within uh, ICS, uh, it's called remote access. So there's plenty of different uh, possibility to skin a cat within remote access. Uh, at Fortinet, we, we provide different possibility to, to host remote access. So whether you'll want to go with uh, SSL VPN, uh, IPsec tunneling, FAT client uh, with Forti client, etc. There's plenty of different ways to, to handle that. Uh, one interesting way as well is our um, uh, web portal in which um, this is a complete clientless uh, solution that will provide remote access to any given customers. The, the idea here is that within the security fabric, you see here the 40, 40OS on the edge, uh, an OT protecting OT boundary uh, based 40OS as well. Um, uh, we have the possibility to host these remote access possibilities without uh, enforcing any uh, client based uh, uh, requirement onto the given third party user. So um, uh, basically what we will need here is just a web browser, a set of credentials and a two-form factor uh, token which is provided here by our 40 token platform and we will be able to interface what the uh, security administrator has configured for us in order to access uh, remote subsystems. Um, again as well something very versatile, you have very different uh, possibility to interface here. The example illustrate for example a user repository which is commonly based on two Windows uh, domain controllers, so addressing these uh, Windows domain controllers to LDAP, LDAP S. Um, anyways, uh, whatever your user repository might be, our Forti Authenticator will have uh, most certainly the ability to address your user repository and add that second factor layer that is sought after within the uh, ICS and OT. Another important factor is that obviously, of course, all these inbounding uh, communication toward the edge for TOS is completely uh, under scrutiny. So we have the possibility to enable IPS, application control, threat lists, for example, if you want to deny uh, any inbounding co communication from known threats. Uh, and furthermore, we still have the possibility as well onto 40 to, for 
example, ship uh, SSL deciphered traffic. So that is a quite handy feature as well because you have the possibility on to your policy to enable, for example, uh, deciphered traffic being shipped toward a CM platform of your choice or a third party uh, IDPS solution of your choice as well. So quite a handy feature here as well. Um, on to the advanced threat uh, protection and cyber deception. Let me dissect a little bit what Forti Deceptor is. Uh, Forti Deceptor is a platform that we came with uh, a few years ago. It's uh, our Onipod solution, so to speak. Um, we have plenty of uh, decoys available within uh, Forti Deceptor. I'll list them here. So obviously, mainly here, uh, the Scala and ICS uh, decoys, we have Rockwell, uh, Ethernet IP, CMNS7, BACnet, EPM, uh, EPMI modules, uh, Modbus simulations, etc. All these decoys are, are deployable uh, to your convenience. So it's like deploying a virtual machine, which will be a decoy deployed within your network. So you can address whatever part of the network your 40 deceptor appliance might be installed in. Uh, we also provide a few IoT decoys. Uh, for the time being, we have uh, simulated IP cameras, Cisco routers, printers, etc. The complete artillery of uh, Windows operating systems. So from 7 to 2019 uh, uh, lately, uh, Linux subsystems system that you can deploy as well as decoys and uh, obviously of course all the services SMB, SQL, RDP and all the applications uh, uh, that are commonly deployed onto decoys. We also help our customer with the uh, Honey token in um, the fact that uh, you will have the possibility to inter-exchange with live subsystems within your network uh, within the decoys and live system meaning that communication will happen in between real systems and the decoy, making the decoy more interesting for anybody that might will want to engage communication with the decoys. And another uh, funny uh, one that I like here is the 40 US SSL VPN decoy. So this one is quite uh, interesting because you will have the possibility to enable a false uh, SSL VPN onto your uh, uh, outbound or, or edge uh, standpoint and track and see who is wanting to engage communication with your uh, uh, false or lured SSL VPN uh, decoy. So an interesting one. Um, of course, obviously, within 40 Deceptor, we will stack the 40 Guard intelligence within the decoys, meaning by that, that antivirus and IPS engine will be embedded within the decoy. So anyone which might drop a payload onto one of these decoy, um, we will uh, launch the artillery of our 40 Guard intelligence in order to possibly match uh, already something onto that uh, disposal on any decoy. And you will be, of course, informed in real time uh, onto... Uh, the uh, attacking and attacker activity and we provide correlated uh, campaigns. Um, here just a view of, of what the, the appliance will give you so I think it's a qu quite an interesting uh, small view of that. We see here that uh, the communication engaged with the decoy will give you the possibility to download a PCAP so you'll have all the, the, the PCAP uh, traffic analysis onto that exchange toward any given possible opponent and the decoy um, so that is one possibility and obviously as you can see here the IPS attack that matched uh, one of our IPS filter will also so be reported within uh, the uh, given incident reports. Our sandboxing subsystem, I talked about it uh, within a few slides uh, and how you can enable that. Um, so the idea of sandboxing is to uh, take submissions and detonate these submissions um, through a few uh, uh, inbounding filters. And um, the Forti uh, Sandbox ecosystem is actually interoperable within the security fabric from a standpoint of, uh, for example, any FortiGate can uh, ship submission, submission, sorry, to the Forti Sandbox subsystem, Forti Mail, Forti Web, Forti Client. Uh, we have integration with Forti CM in order to ship uh, syslogs to our CM device. And of course, obviously, we can log uh, all the activity of the Forti Sandbox ecosystem toward our 40 analyzer subsystem. Um, here is a view of 
how that subsystem is actually functioning and, and, uh, what is actually going on within, uh, the complete subsystem. I'll speed up a little bit, but, uh, interestingly, you have the possibility to tap traffic. So wherever your sandbox might be within your installment, you have the possibility to engage with, uh, span port and send, uh, all the traffic to the sandboxing subsystem if so you want. Um, the fabric devices, as you can see with the fleece of 40 gate devices will integrate at the device, uh, input standpoint. Another another interesting one is the network share. I'll detail that a little bit further on. The adapters here are for ICAP uh, submissions, for example. Uh, we also will find here BCC uh, connectivity possibility from any mail system if you want to send every single email through BCC and the MTA uh, agent possible onto the 40 sandbox uh, subsystem as well. The on-demand and URL detection, this is something that an administrator will do manually on the system, so it's also available here. Um, the idea is here on the, the 40 sandbox component is to as quickly as possible get rid of the submission so to speak. So as quickly as we can match that the submission is either uh, something which is uh, 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 malicious or something which is clean uh, we will do that uh, with the, 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 the most uh, accurate way and as said uh, going through the filter in order to release the queue of potential jobs coming into the 40 sandbox system. One of the last stage you can see here the V uh, AI scan. This is where we will detonate the submission within a given virtual machine and let that submission do exactly, for example, a WinPE file. Uh, let that WinPE file do exactly what it wants to do onto that circumvented uh, environment with internet access and record every single thing that that particular submission will do. And then once we have all this information, uh, uh, match a verdict onto uh, that submission. The other interesting information and last one I will talk to you about here is the update of the malware DB that you can see here. So whenever our 40 sandbox might find something malicious uh, at one end of the network, we will update the malware DB of your fleets of 40 gates. So if something is actually detected at one end of the network, uh, that information is uh, spread apart onto all and every single 40 West uh, platform. Another important factor for um, ICS and uh, OT uh, interested customers, we have what is called this OT companion VM, which will be something that will detonate along the virtual machines into the VM scans. Meaning by that, that if there is any uh, interaction at the OT level uh, using, for example, layer two type of communications or any given Modbus IC uh, 104 type of communication, we will record that through the companion VM and we'll give you all these informations within the verdict. Um, one use case which uh, will uh, uh, summarize all the, the possibility we have with using remote access plus 40 sandboxing, for example, here the idea is that our uh, third party uh, remote user, remote engineer, uh, will have uh, the possibility to engage an RDP session to the engineering workstation, which you see here, will have to, the possibility to engage an SSH session toward an IAD within the uh, OT uh, authentication boundary. Uh, now that this has been said, uh, that individual won't have the possibility to upload anything onto that particular RDP session, uh, neither will he have the possibility to do so onto the SSH session. So how will he, for example, if we take, for example, a, a third-party engineer, a remote engineer that needs to do something within the uh, OT uh, installment, um, he needs to update the firmware to, to, to dispose some codes within that installment in order to conduct its operation. But we want to make sure that this code passes every single potential uh, uh, checkpoints uh, we have available. So the idea here is that the remote user will face a third party uh, upload repository. This is exactly what uh, I refer to with the network share onto the sandboxing subsystem. So this is a network share. The sandbox will actually continuously scan that third party upload repository and upon verdicting will dispatch the files which are known good into its final destination. So here, our engineering workstation. And if any of these files match uh, as being malicious, of course, we will uh, quarantine these contents and we will inform the user through a simple text file within the final repository there that 
its uploaded file hasn't made it through uh, the final repository because it contained some malicious contents, etc., and so on. So uh, a use case that is it's often used in in the wild in in order to control uh, inbound file for uh, ICS and OT customers. Uh, I think I, uh, I have a lack of time, but I have plenty of, uh, of uh, uh, not plenty, but uh, a few other slides. Uh, I'll actually skip that one. A 40 manager we've seen. Um, maybe this one is interesting. Uh, some of our customers, they like to, to still keep uh, what they called uh, the air gap. So um, uh, the air gap is a complete lack of connectivity from their uh, ICS installment. So they won't have external facing connectivity from the OT uh, layers and we have a solution for that at 40 uh, net which is uh, through our management platform in order to provide a local uh, 40 guard distribution server meaning by that that you will have all the updates so you can either uh, let that 40 manager retrieve these updates uh, in a very circumstanced uh, manner or you can alternatively um, conduct manual updates on your 40 manager platform, which will push all these updates uh, toward uh, uh, deployment where you don't have uh, outbound reachability. Another interesting factor is that not only will we push that for 40 OS, but we support, uh, of course, uh, the 40 OS, 40 proxy, for example, all the updates going to our 40 sandbox subsystem, uh, all the updates going to 40 client subsystem are also supported by 40 managers. So if your customer will really want not to have uh, outbound connectivity. It's something which is uh, possible with that particular deployment. Uh, 40 analyzer, I think I'll skip that. And uh, yeah, let's go to the 40 CM. Uh, th there's a few use cases that we, we've seen um, into into um, some of the deployments with 40 CM. Um, the, the interesting idea here is that uh, for customers that might already be 40 net customers, for most of them, they already have uh, the 40 analyzer platform. What we do in such uh, cases is that we have the possibility to literally integrate 40 uh, in their installment within minutes because we will use a log forward from the FAST platform directly within the CM. So this is one tunnel from uh, Fort Analyzer to Fort CM and where we will ship already all the logs from the Fortinet security fabric and have that uh, into our CM platform. Um, of course, we offer the uh, Fortinet Cyber Security uh, uh, Fabric View that you can see here uh, uh, that's embedded within 40CM and you have plenty of different CM possibilities uh, namely a use case I had was for one customer that really wanted to send a very dedicated uh, type of SNMP traps toward an SNMP enabled subsystem that he couldn't uh, actually do so from uh, the device originally. We have the possibility for example within 40CM to, to leverage such use cases conduct some incident and from this incident uh, in the occurrence of uh, such incidents send uh, SNMP traps uh, in, in for example. Uh, last slide on that um, uh, interesting use cases you, you see here I don't know if you can read that but uh, uh, we see uh, permitted traffic inbounding which has matched uh, the 40 uh, uh, guard malicious uh, threat list so this is embedded within 40CM and directly after we see the host which is quarantined by uh, our NAC feature so this is a, a host quarantine uh, enabled at the 40 OS uh, layer the interesting part here is that all the this is correlated and you have all this information into a blink of an eye so if the, the CM platform is really something that, that will help you at getting a grasp onto whatever is actually going on within uh, your networks. Um, of course we can integrate uh, thread feeds so as you can see here I named a few uh, Alien Vault, OTX, thread streams, uh, uh, thread connects, uh, there's plenty of uh, integration you can do so if some of these thread streams are interesting for you and you want to uh, inject these information within your uh, CM installment, it's perfectly doable. Uh, and that's it. I think I'll just detail a little bit uh, what type of uh, ecosystem we currently have and on what we are working. So basically when we will talk about fabric connectors, these connectors are connectors that are uh, actually made by Fortinet in order to interface a different uh, type of technology. You have some technology vendors here, Aruba, Cisco, uh, ServiceNow for example. So 
these are the technology connectors we at Fortinet are developing. Uh, we also uh, talk a lot about the Fabric API integrations. This is where the third-party vendor, for example, uh, Arista, Nozomi, uh, Siemens, uh, uh, Dragos, uh, etc., are developing their integration with our product through the leverage of our fa fabric APIs. So that is quite common. Uh, we have for some of them state-of-the-art uh, integrations, uh, which which are really uh, uh, interesting use cases for the given customers that want to integrate uh, such type of third-party uh, uh, possibility with different subsystems. Um, fabric DevOps, this is a community-driven DevOps uh, possibility offered by uh, Fortinet. We have uh, the Fortinet uh, uh, developer network platform on which uh, DevOps can exchange uh, their ideas and, and different scripts, etc. Uh, uh, plus all the security provisioning and configuration and orchestration possible at that layer. And finally, the extended ecosystem. This is mainly where we will exchange threats. So as you can see, the Cyber Threat Alliance, uh, the OT uh, Cyber Security Alliance, and uh, uh, all such kind of uh, threat exchange uh, possibilities. Um, the operational technology ecosystem, I, I won't go into much detail in here. There's plenty of integration. So, so these type of integration are exactly the one which falls into the IP, uh, API integration, uh, that we saw, uh, earlier. Uh, there's plenty of different actors that, that you are seeing here. Uh, I'll just take one example, the Siemens Rugged.com that you can see up there, which was an interesting use case because they, they came up on the market with a, a solution which is called RX 1500. And that solution uh, is an industrial switching solution in which they wanted to embed some compute power and by that host uh, some cybersecurity possibilities within that compute power. And they, they actually chose uh, FortiOS in order to embed that into their devices that they will provide to, to their customer. And in the, the core of that solution, for example, the FortiOS is actually uh, running. Uh, onto the solution vendors uh, integration uh, of course we have plenty uh, of solutions we we are uh, working a lot with Schneider ABB uh, Siemens the Yokogawa GE of course uh, in order to provide and enable cybersecurity for their deployments um, and uh, mainly uh, that's what I wanted to share with you on that particular slide. And with that, um, I'm just leaving uh, the last slide of my presentation with the uh, Fortinet Security Fabric vision that uh, we had uh, uh, a couple of years ago. I think uh, we started that in 2015. And the idea, of course, is that every single uh, potential product within uh, the Fortinet Security uh, portfolio uh, actually interact uh, amongst one another, and the central piece of that being uh, our FortiGuard uh, threat intelligence. So thank you very much for your attention today. Sorry for my few kernel panics. <laughs> um, uh, if there's any question in the audience, please just raise a hand. I'm, I'm up for any question. Don't be afraid. And uh, uh, thank you very much.